It was approaching night time when I returned to the hotel. I approached the counter and hit the bell. Sir, I'm informing you that I will be leaving first thing tomorrow. Much like the first time I arrived, the employee did not come. I tapped the dusty counter with my fingers in irritation. Sir, let's not do this again. I allowed some more time to pass, but the man still did not show up. Is that how you are to treat a customer? Refusing to wait any longer, I climbed over the counter nearly getting tangled in cobwebs. Gross. Yuck. How can anyone live in this kind of condition? From the way the lights were dimly flickering, I was forced to collect as much light into my eyes as I could. As expected, the room was in total disrepair. Books were lying in piles beside the bookshelves. Webs coated furniture and tickled my nose. I fought the urge to sneeze. The floorboards creaked and moaned under my weight. The further I went, the light diluted into beams. Sir, come out now. This is getting ridiculous. Finally, my eyes settled on a heap of clothes. He couldn't, could he? The thought of the peculiar man parading around in his birthday suit was burned into my mind. A ruffling of the clothes knocked me out of my train of thought. I slowly advanced towards the clothes with it becoming evident that the man evaporated. Before I could theorize what happened to him, dozens of small white objects erupted from the clothing and scattered around like cockroaches dispersing when a light was turned on. What the? The millions of spidery, bloated beings crawled on the walls and up my clothes. In a panic, I scrambled over the counter, the wet squelches of crushed younglings making me squeamish. Debris rained down from the ceiling as a sudden earthquake surge. I could have sworn I heard something writhing in agony from the bowels of the earth. The foundation of the hotel shook incessantly and groaned with the death of each abomination suggesting a possible lake between the two. The stairs finally dissolved and exploded into splinters. I covered my head as best I could, but the monstrous arachnids kept pursuing. The wet, gooey bodies of the monsters popped under my feet like overripe grapes. I had the sinking feeling of some of the residue getting between my toes. Eldritch use clung to the solace of my shoes, restricting my movement. Each time I tried to move, the runny, stringy substance came into contact with the floor and formed a strong adhesive. And those legs, so many legs, hundreds of thousands of marbles, with an unnatural number of appendages crawled on my body. They creep their way up my pants legs with some slithering beneath the fabric, no matter how many times I tried to bat them off. These abominations latched on my body. The hairs on my body rose on end from the impression that I was being licked by the millions of spiders. My skin felt violated from the endless probing and pinching. I grabbed my ankles and continued my mad attempt to free myself. Help! A faint, weak murmur caught my attention. I darted my eyes back and forth in search of the scream of urgency seeing no one until I directed my sight to a hideous event. The white pulsating blobs with stalks for legs linked the innumerable limbs together in huge, grotesque lines and did the most harrowing of things any sensible man could anticipate. They started to move in a single motion multiplying and expanding until something ghastly was taking form. The gunky paste on the solace of my shoes finally gave way. However, when combined with the invasive pest crawling all over me, 
and making me squirm, I fell on my rear. The monsters kept feeding into the growing figure. Much like a well-oiled machine, the beasts kept feeding themselves into each other. Hell! With all the beasts working together, a human shape came into being. They moved in a swimming motion, shifting their achy legs to a side to mimic the gesture of limbs. The dread welled up in the pit of my stomach and crawled up my throat. The insidious spawn multiplied further, breaking apart and restructuring themselves until a vaguely humanoid shape took form. However, its skin became melty and ran like a lit wax candle. My eyes become bloodshot. It was the employee. Except now, it was clear to me that what I was speaking to in my entire stay in Vicksburg were millions of blotches who hardly could pass themselves off as human. The piercing assaulted my eardrums calling to mind a nail scratching a chalkboard. The man, nay, the creature, moved about miserably dragging its upper body along the floor. Its mouth hung agape with a haze we spewing out. Almost every slight movement brought an ending suffering for it, it seemed. The humanoid anomaly held out its hand to me, gesturing in a hopeful fashion. It jerked itself closer to me, moaning and shuffling just to stay in its form a bit longer. I became frozen temporarily, horrified at the unholy display which violated the laws of nature that every being under the sun had to follow. The hotel continued to collapse around us, shaking me out of my terror. I slowly backed away from the monster, but it somehow sensed what I was intending to do and clawed its way towards me. It hissed at me destroying the illusion it was desperately clinging to. Before it could strike, a plank fell from the collapsing ceiling and pinned it. It let out a high-pitched, hellish shriek, but there was no way I was going to humor it. I rushed to the door, the wet squelches of the brutalings I had killed echoing. 